I would like to welcome everyone. My name is Andre Bicius. I'm the president of Italio RSA. Special welcomes His Worship, the Mayor of Southland, Rod Scott, Wallace Takatimu, Chairperson, Tony Philpott, invited the guests, and ladies and gentlemen. It is my privilege to tell you a little about the history of the kilt and what was made during World War I by the members of the Italio Red Cross. Residents of Italio and districts paid a small fee for squares of calico and red embroidery cotton, which they used to embroider names, pictures, phrases, some of which were dated 1917 and 1918. Each square was then hand sewn together to create a blanket, 77 squares in total. The overall size of the quilt is 210 centimetres by 165 centimetres, and for the older generation that's 82 inches by 65 inches. <laughs> it was displayed in the window of Boyd's shop in Italio, then sent to a hospital in Milton on Thames where injured New Zealand soldiers were being treated. The Italio quilt came into the possession of Mr and Mrs M. M. F. Ambler of Cumble North, Scotland. Mr. Ambler's letter to the Southern Times was published on the 6th of April 1976 and resulted in a little bit more information concerning the history of the quilt. More than 27 letters were included in the sale. These are not the official letters, these are copies. So anybody after this is most welcome to read them at their leisure. The quilt was raffled for charity when the New Zealand soldiers left for home. The person who won the quilt later died from the effects of the war and the quilt was passed on to his mother. His mother then, bringing back unhappy <coughs> memories, put the quilt up for sale. And Mr Ambler's wife's grandfather, who also served in the First World War, purchased it from there and it was handed down through the family until the auction. <coughs> At the monthly meeting of the Italio RSA, it was brought to their attention by the Italio Museum, thank you Tony Beck, that the World War I quilt made by the Red, Italio Red Cross was up for auction in the UK. The meeting was very interested in the quilt and returning it home to Italio, prompting the RSA members to agree to each <coughs> contribute for a collective bid. <coughs> Myself, member Royden Brown and Faye Brown <coughs> were tasked by the RSA members to register for a phone bid and therefore come to the auction. The auction started at 11am on Wednesday, 7th of June 2023 in the UK time, with 100 lots per hour making it approximately 1.20 a.m. Thursday 8th of June for us to be sitting up to attend the auction. It was very tense and there was a lot of... Uh, we won't talk about that. <laughs> so, the local branch of the RSA were understandably keen to get the court back on home soil they faced some competition from the UK-based collectors which pushed the final price up. However, it was ultimately well worth their representative staying up to 1.30 in the morning to secure an important piece of local heritage. The Gilding's director, Will Gilding, who was on the phone with us through the auction, was very pleased to have it actually coming home to Otago. So he commented on that. It was also brought to uh, where the local and Harbour and Mail reported her in England that the court will be returning home to the remote New Zealand town it had come from. We're delighted that the Italian quilt is returning home 
after a century in the UK. So with that, I'd like to bring His Worship, the Mayor, Rod Scott, forward to say a few words, please. Thanks, Andre, and um, thanks very much for having me here on a, on a very special, significant day. And it's, um, I love it when I come to events and I'm able to put out more chairs because um, more, more people have come than expected. And I think um, a town day must be at standstill at the moment because we've got half the town here. And it's, um, but, uh, it's great to actually recognise the significance of this. And we think back to over 100 years ago, quite a long time ago, but a very important, significant time in our history. And all those people that um, some gave all and, and um, all gave some and some gave all in that, in that time and recognising that and I think bringing it home, I really commend the RSA for finding it and, and going to that effort to bring it home. It, it's a significant piece of, um, piece of, I suppose you could call it art, but history as well and I think it's really great to have it back here in Southland where it belongs and where it was done and it's a, a reminder to us all of um, the, the sacrifice that those um, good people made all those years ago. So it's. Um, Fantastic to have it back home, and yeah, once again, commend the RSA for bringing it home. And it, it feels, it feels right. I had a quick, um, a sneaky look under the thing, and it, it, it's really incredible and so great to have it back here in, in Otago where it belongs. So without further ado, I think we're going to. Um, Thank you. Shall we just move forward a wee bit? It is my great honour to unveil this awesome book and welcome it back home. I believe it's going to take pride of place inside this building, is it? Yes. The STC graciously has agreed to let us display this down in the foyer where everyone can just walk in and out and view the place. Uh, our intentions also are to build a storyboard, put it where Rob's standing, right beside it. We'll have the storyboard of how we did it, when we did it, and they can read it. So it's, it's all very good. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Being in a, in a um, one of those auctions online, it must be quite uh, quite nerve wracking. Oh, absolutely. The adrenaline <laughs> was running very high. Yeah. Uh, we certainly didn't need to keep it, uh, wake up bills on because we're full on. Roy did the bidding, and Faye and I were watching it on the computer, mm. and there was a lot of. Uh, Actually, I wouldn't call it to and fro in, wasn't it? Mm. And the Mr. Will Gilding, the auctioneer, heard the commotion on the phone and was laughing. You could hear him laughing in England about these Kiwis that were quite excited. So, yeah, no, it was great. Were there, were there other people bidding? Yes. Yeah. There's quite a few. Mm. There's probably about five to eight bids, all told. Yeah. They let them do their uh, postal bids and other bids first, and then people, when the bidding started, the people in the auction house, that's when we start. We came in. We just said, just wait until the other stuff. Mm. Tell you when to start bidding. In terms of the price, did you have a fixed budget that you could go to? Yeah, yeah. The RSA members all set the price, and they gave us free reign to go to that price. And luckily enough, we didn't have to. Mm. So it was good. Mm. But it was great that they all chipped in and, and made this happen because mm. they were so passionate about bringing it home. Mm. And uh, when we first got it home, we did a showing, didn't we, downstairs? Yeah. Yep. And it's the first time I've ever seen three of our members crying while they're reading the, the quilt. It was so emotional. Mm. So, yeah, it's been a long trip, and, and, and it's thank you, and it's brilliant to see it all happen and come together. Mm. Very rewarding. It is. Yeah. Good experience. It is. Good for the community because those are community names on the, on the quilt. Yes. It's come back yeah. to the place it needs to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The majority of them all know our family involved in it. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. Everybody's got some connection. Yeah. Do you think that um, the auctioneers and, and maybe some of the bidders even uh, from over there would have realised the significance of it coming back oh, here? absolutely. Yeah. The, uh, no, they, auctioneer, the yeah. auctioneer was very passionate about it coming home. Oh, that's good. Yeah, he, he let us yeah. know that he wasn't going to lose us. And, and <laughs> Even though we were looking at the phone every five minutes or no, <laughs> five seconds to make sure it was going to ring. Uh, yeah, no, it was good. 
I'm it must sure, mean I'm sure it, he would have stopped the auction if we'd lost telephone contact. He would have stopped the auction and then. Yeah. Yeah. It must have been absolute elation when you 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 finally got it. Well, the funny thing is, I think it was probably about two hours later before we got to sleep. Yeah. 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 And then half the members were going to ring us at six a.m. to find out if we'd won or not. So. <laughs> Yeah. It was quite a high priority. Yeah. yeah. And thank God we got there because they would have killed us if we'd lost. <laughs> <laughs> We've been, yeah. what do you call it? Drawn and quartered. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>